In this video, I'm going to talk about the concept histology of kidney. As you all know, kidney is a paired organ that is present just below the diaphragm on either side of the vertebral column or spine. It's a very important part of the urinary system which will filter the blood and produce urine. As you can see in this diagram, kidney is a bean shaped structure with the lateral convex surface and the concave inner border. This concave inner border consisting of a special type of part called as hilum. Hilum is just the opening or the passageway for the ureter and the renal vessel or through this hilum the ureter exit the kidney and the renal vessel enter and exit the kidney. The entire kidney is covered by a connective tissue capsule known as renal capsule. Inner to this capsule or the parenchyma part or inner tissue of the kidney made up of mainly two layers that is outer cortex region and inner medulla region. Both this cortex and the medulla region consisting of millions of urine producing structure known as nephron. So structural and functional unit of the kidney is the nephron and this nephron is present in the cortex and medulla part of the kidney or in the parenchyma part of the kidney. The urine that is produced by this nephron will enter into the renal calyces. Renal calyces is a series of chamber which will begin with the smallest chamber known as minor calyx. This minor calyx, many such minor calyx join together to form a large major calyx. So urine that is produced from this millions of nephron first enter into the minor calyx and from the minor calyx it enters into the major calyx. From the major calyx the urine enters into the renal pelvis region. And from the renal pelvis, the urine passes through the ureter and it is temporarily stored in the urinary bladder. So, the part of the kidney which consisting of this minor calyx, major calyx, renal pelvis and ureter is known as renal sinuses. As the name indicates, sinus means a cavity. So, it is a cavity within the kidney which consisting of this renal calyces, renal pelvis, ureter, renal vessels, all this structure and this sinus is cushioned by the fat. So that part or the cavity is known as a renal sinuses. So apart from this renal sinuses, the rest part of the cortex and medulla consisting of a nephron. If you observe the section of kidney under microscope, the cortex part of the kidney appears granular and this granular appearance is because of the presence of ovoid structure and coiled structure of the nephron. Ovoid structure like malfusion corpuscles and coiled structure like a convoluted part of the nephron. So because of this cortex appears granular. From that you can tell that the upper part of the nephron is present in the cortex region. The medulla region appears striped and this striped appearance of the medulla is because of vertical region of the nephron like headless loop and the collecting duct. So from that you can tell that the lower part of the nephron is present in the medulla region. Apart from that the medulla region also consisting of several pyramid shaped structure known as renal pyramid or medullary pyramid. And each renal pyramid is separated by the projection of the cortex known as columns of Bertini or renal columns. So between each pyramid the columns of Bertini or renal columns are present. The broad base of the renal pyramid is in contact with the cortex whereas narrow apex of the renal pyramid opens into the minor calyx. The tip of this renal pyramid is known as renal papillae and this renal papillae consisting of numerous opening or small holes through which the urine enters into the minor calyx. The area of this renal papillae which consisting of numerous opening is called as area cribrosa. So through this area cribrosa the urine that is produced by the nephron enters into the minor calyx. So major portion of the kidney consisting of different parts of the nephron. So studying the histology of kidney is nothing but the studying the histology of nephron. So now I am going to talk about the histology of nephron or different types of cell that is present in different parts of the nephron. This is a diagram showing the structure of nephron and this is a diagram showing the histology of the kidney. 
different oval shaped structure here represents the section of different parts of the nephron. As you can see in this diagram, nephron mainly consisting of two parts that is malpigian corpuscles and associated renal tubules. As I already told, malpigian corpuscles or renal corpuscles are present in the cortex region and associated renal tubule extend into the medulla part of the kidney. Based on the distribution and morphology, nephrons are of two types that is cortical nephron and the juxtamedullary nephron. We will discuss these two types one by one. First one is cortical nephron. As the name indicates, in the cortical nephron, the malpigian corpuscles or renal corpuscles are present very close to the renal capsule. And this cortical nephron have very short renal tubules which extend only up to the upper part of the medulla region. Whereas in the case of juxtamedullary nephron, the malpigian corpuscles or renal corpuscles are present at the corticomedullary junction or at the junction between the cortex and the medulla region. And they have very long renal tubule which extend deep into the medulla region. So that is about the two types of a nephron that is cortical nephron and the juxtamedullary nephron. Anyhow, both cortical and juxtamedullary nephron also consisting of mainly two parts that is malpigian corpuscles and associated renal tubules. Malpigian corpuscles or renal corpuscles made up of mainly two parts that is Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. As you can see in this diagram, glomerulus is present in the center and it is made up of tuft of capillary or group of capillary. And this group of capillaries finally joins with the afferent and the efferent arterioles. Afferent and efferent arterioles are the one which carry the blood into the kidney and away from the kidney. And this glomerulus is the actual filtering unit of the kidney which will filter the blood to produce urine. This glomerulus is surrounded by Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule as you can see in this diagram made up of two layer. Outer parietal layer, inner visceral layer. And between the parietal and visceral layer, capsular space is present. This is a section of the malpigian corpuscles and at the center we have glomerulus which is surrounded by Bowman's capsule. So this is a parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule which is a outer layer. And the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule made up of a simple squamous epithelium or simple flat cells. And the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule is present on the capillaries of the glomerulus. And those cells are called as podocytes. So visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule made up of special type of cell known as podocyte. And these podocytes are present on the capillaries of the glomerulus itself. These podocytes consisting of a single cell body from which a process known as primary process arises and from this primary process arises a secondary process or a pedicel. These secondary process of the podocyte they will interdigitate with each other to form a filtration slits and this filtration slits helps in the filtration of the blood to form a urine. So cells of the glomerulus along with the cells of the Bowman's capsule will filter the blood to form a urine. So that is about the different types of cell that is present in the malpigian corpuscles. Malpigian corpuscles leads to proximal convoluted tubule. As you can see in this diagram, proximal convoluted tubule is a highly coiled or convoluted part of the nephron and it is present in the cortex region. So this is a section of a proximal convoluted tubule which is present in the cortex region. This proximal convoluted tubule is lined by single layer of columnar cell or a cuboidal cell and these cells have microvilli at its apex. Because of this microvilli, it gives brush border appearance for this proximal convoluted tubule. As you can see here, these are the microvilli which gives brush border appearance for this proximal convoluted tubule. The terminal part of this proximal convoluted tubule is straight and it joins with the descending limb of the henless loop. So next part is henless loop. Henless loop mainly consisting of three parts that is descending limb, ascending limb and the thin segment of the henless loop and it is present at the medulla region of the kidney. The descending limb of the henless loop is structurally similar to that of proximal convoluted tubule and ascending limb is structurally similar to that of distal convoluted tubule which I am going to discuss it later. Third part is thin segment of the henless loop 
and it is present as a U shape in the medulla region of the kidney. And this thin segment of the Henle's loop made up of single layer of flat cell or single layer of squamous epithelium with the large lumen at the center. As you can see in this diagram, this is the thin segment of the Henle's loop which is made up of a flat cell or squamous cell with the large central lumen and it is present in the medulla region. The ascending limb of the Henle's loop gives rise to or it leads to distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule is less convoluted and shorter when compared to proximal convoluted tubule and it is also present in the cortex region. The distal convoluted tubule is lined by single layer of a cuboidal epithelium but without brush border. As you can see in this diagram, this is the distal convoluted tubule in section which is present in the cortex region and it is made up of cuboidal cells without brush border. This is a proximal convoluted tubule with the brush border but here it is a BCT without a brush border. So because of that the lumen of the distal convoluted tubule is larger when compared to lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule. Some of the region in the distal convoluted tubule comes in contact with the glomerulus. In that region, the cells of the distal convoluted tubule get modified into columnar cells and they become densely packed and those cells are called as macula densa. So macula densa is a specialized cells of the distal convoluted tubule which comes in contact with the glomerulus. So these cells are columnar cells and highly or densely packed cells and they are called as macula densa. Macula densa play a very important role in the absorption of the ion. So that is about the different types of cell that is present in the distal convoluted tubule. Distal convoluted tubule leads to collecting tubules. Many collecting tubules of different nephron joins together to form a collecting duct. Actually, collecting duct is not a part of a nephron. Nephron and collecting duct together called as uriniferous tubule. So, nephron plus collecting duct is called as uriniferous tubule. So, urine from the distal convoluted tubule, it enters the collecting tubule. From the collecting tubule, it enters the collecting duct. And from the collecting duct, it emptied into the minor calyx of the kidney. There is a one more special type of cell that is present in the kidney called as juxtaglomerular apparatus or JG apparatus. This JG apparatus mainly made up of two types of cell that is macula densa and JG cell. As I already told, macula densa is a modified cells of a distal convoluted tubule which is, comes in contact with the glomerulus. So these cells of distal convoluted tubule becomes columnar and they are densely packed and they are called as a macula densa. JG cells or juxtaglomerular cells are the modified smooth muscle cells of afferent arteriole which is present near the renal corpuscles. So these are the modified smooth muscle cells of afferent arterioles and they are called as juxtaglomerular cells. Macula densa and JG cells together called as JG apparatus and this JG apparatus play a very important role in the absorption of the iron in the renal tubules. So that is all about the different types of cell that is present in the kidney or histology of the kidney. I hope this video will be useful. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.